Hello. Hello. Welcome. Good afternoon. Episode good two, afternoon. 201. It is 201. We had our special 200th episode last week. And we had a special giveaway. Didn't Congratulations we? to Retro Rob. I wonder if he's, if he's joining us this week. I wonder if he's got it built yet. I won't have it built yet, will he? Why not? It's pretty quick. He's a builder. He is a builder. He no, loves I to don't build. Think he works that quick. He loves to build things. Oh, look. Everyone saw the messages. Did they? They know we're on today instead of tomorrow because tomorrow is Good Friday. I didn't even put a post out. I completely forgot. I wouldn't even Didn't know you? what day of the week it is. Yeah. I do know that it's episode 201, and I do know that there's a beautiful car in front of me. It is a nice car, isn't it? got a special guest today. We do. A very exciting special guest. I know. Yes. How about we say hello to everyone that's uh, viewing at the moment? So Nid's on. He's saying happy Easter. Happy Easter, Mr. Nids. Happy Easter indeed. Craig Jordan's on. I feel that everybody's on holidays but us. Hmm? I feel that everybody is on holidays but us. What, today? No. Oh, I would be, wouldn't it? It's dead out Long there. weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't been out there. It's busy. This uh, dead. Michael's on. Retro Rob, there he is. Yep. The winner from last week. Just uh, Scotty's on from the US. Show us your tram, Retro. Peter Edwards, hello. Tony P's on. Tony P's definitely. Oh, Richard Rob's already guessing the car. We haven't talked is about he? a car yet. Oh, I've said that. Thunder one Turbine, there. hello. Hello. All right, so what have we got here? What What is that? We have a car of the week. So this is our regular car of the week. And, and if, what it do gets, we need to know? if it gets guessed too early, I'm going to have a backup. Have we got a backup? Yeah, there's a couple of them now. I've got to oh, get it out and have a look at it. Because I've got a feeling that these guys are tonguing for it. They are. So what do we need to know? We need to know the make. The make. The model. The model. The year. The color. The color. And the weight and the engine size engine size why not okay i've got no idea what that is but i'm sure someone will guess i'm only saying that because there's a few different engine sizes in that model oh were they how do we work it out we're going to open it up and have a look you can get a pop the hood really well you might know if you're a car enthusiast you might know by certain badges or uh -huh. guards or hubcaps uh -huh. well it's they, only my realm your realm they, we will find out. Don't talk to me about realms. Have you seen the oh, gun? Have you seen the Gundam that's come in this oh, way? I accidentally press that. So Nids is guess. All right. So basically, I reckon all of that is incorrect. What? Who's all incorrect? So Nids is saying it's a Trax Holden Monaro two door coupe, mm. yellow, sort of. Forty third scale is incorrect. Two hundred grams. I don't think so. Can we have a that? But we can. I can confirm it is a Holden. Somebody said Holden. Oh, there's a few guesses here. Is there? Yes. yes. Well, what? I will get back to it. All right. All right. So I've got plenty of stuff on. Plenty of stuff on. So how about we what? have our special guest on? Do you want to have the special guest on? What do you reckon? Before he gets bored? Yes. All right. Before he gets scared. He runs away. I'm scared. <laughs> Come on in. We've got Mr. Hello, welcome uh, in. Phil Badger, haven't we? Hi. How are you today, Phil? Oh, I'm good, mate. Good, good. Thank you for coming on. Now, Phil was not expected to be joining us today. Um... Phil, where are you from? I'm from Sydney, or actually south of Sydney, so don't hold it against me being in, here in Melbourne. A little um, bit. Now, a Sydney I'm person, offended now. But I left Sydney because I didn't like it. Oh, thank God. And I moved to the Southern Highlands in New South Wales. The nice. Southern Highlands? Yeah, it's awesome. Is it? Yep. Well, there you go. And what? And where, where are to you from company-wise? Company-wise, we're from New South Wales again. Yep. And I'm an individual who has a great help from my wife. And if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, but we yeah, all? so. Aren't, but she, aren't we all, aren't they beautiful things? They are. And without her, I wouldn't be able to operate the company. She does so much work in the background. Yeah. And the company is? Go for Models. There we go. Go for Models. Go for Models. So you out. are the proud owner of Go for Models. Yes, And I what am. does Go for Models do? It manufactures model trains yep. in N scale, Australian outline, and yeah. So Phil, like I said, Phil wasn't expected to be in the show today. We've got a brand new delivery of B class and items that Phil's going to go through us with. Mm. But we sort of he said, oh, "I'm going to hand deliver these to you in store today. I'm going to come in and check out the shop. Hasn't been for a little bit, a little minute. Um, it's going to a train show as well over the weekend." So Phil, you're saying how Gopher came about? How did yes. it come about? It came about with a friend who actually approached me and said, I know you've always wanted to manufacture, mass manufacture trains, and I was a kit manufacturer for oh, about 20 years before that mm -hmm. in model trains. Right. Um, I'm also a plastic modeler, by the way, so don't hold that against me being just trains. <laughs> um, 
but anyway, and he approached me and um, next thing I knew, I was manufacturing, Lot mass manufacturing model trains. Oh. And we've been going since 2011 as gopher models. Mm. The other friend um, who came to see me, we're actually Ixian models, which manufactures HO Australian. Yeah. And um, we've been going since 2007. Yeah. So Ixian and gopher models, your friends. One does HO yeah. and one does N scale. Mm. Yes. And all Australian outline machinery. Absolutely. It is now. Ixian used to do English outline of some things, but we've crossed over the to the dark side and doing Australian because we love it. And we're thankful that you do. We're thankful that you do because it's really good to actually have an Australian company doing Australian stuff and, a, funnily enough, a bit of Victorian stuff. Uh, absolutely. Mm. You know? And South Australian and New South Wales. I oh, don't worry about them. <laughs> don't worry about them. <laughs> yeah. All right. So why are you here today? What have you got for us? You got the latest releases from Gopher. Yes, the latest releases are a rerun of the B class. Now, shall we go to the top camera? Yeah, yes. let me just get this focused. Um, I'll just get this out of the box. They're packed rather well, and and I I, I love the uh, I love watching experts handle these trains because they really scare me. Phil. Why? They just do. I'm scared of. I'm not a train yeah. modeler. I am trying to focus. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And the very go. fact that you designed the loco and the box knows you, you know exactly how to handle it. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting. Um, when we did these, is I was very hesitant at the beginning to know could I sell enough of them to be able to do a second run. Yes. There was never any, any intention initially of doing a second run, and this is our second run. And on the second run, we've changed the colour scheme to the V-line, which came in in the, I'm not sure the exact date, but it was around the end of the 70s. Yep. Um, and what we've done is we've done the V-line colour scheme. And it's a B-class. B-class and is still running around in other colour schemes mm. at this time. And I love the very fact that you've got a matte finish on there, a satin finish. Mm. It's Absolutely. really nice, and the gloss against the uh, the handrails and the windows and the other finishes make it look really, really uh, classy. What about the wipers? The wipers look really fine. Jesus, they must have tiny hands. <laughs> and lots no? of yeah, they have. No? Sure. All the all lots the women on the production line when I was up there about this tall, and I'm not very tall at all. Really. <laughs> And they've got little fingers, but they're a great bunch of people up there. Yep. And yeah. So what are some of the features? These have working lights. They have working lights, working marker lights, working um, number boards. Oh. The number boards are just below the marker light, so I can't point because my fingers are too fat. But we'll try and get it. There we are. So the number boards, the marker lights, and the headlight. Yes. They're all lit. Right. And one of the other features is in the old B class, what we did is we had to solder the DCC chip in. And the DCC, for those who don't know, is digital command control mm -hmm. for model trains so you can drive them like the real thing out there on the track. Um, and we had to solder it in because there wasn't a chip that was small enough to fit into this loco mm -hmm. where I wanted it to go um, without soldering it in. Mm -hmm. So now we've put a six-pin plug because they're now small enough. Right. The chips are only five mil by five mil. And is it easy to get into? Yes. I'll show you something with it. Right. One of the things when I – my frustration with a lot of manufacturers is they don't make it easy for the person to maintain them. So – Oh, you just broke it. I'm scared. No, I didn't break it. <laughs> I wow. just pull the you just pull it by the center axle, right? And just pull it out. I'll That's stop, simple. I'll stop it. Yeah, and then the fuel tank, it clips off, and sometimes it can be. There we are, and oh, it's that's where you put the chip. So oh, okay. one of the differences, sorry, I'm that's right. Looking at the camera. Oh one of the God. differences in my models to the others is you've got to pull them apart to put your DCC chip in them. Yep. Yes. In these ones, you don't. You just have to pull the fuel tank off. You want to maintain the bogey. You just pull the bogey out, as I showed you, 
and I'll show you how to clip it back in. It really is some... plug and play. Well, aren't you it clever? Really I had no idea. So... You've given away the secrets now. Oh, sorry. Like you, see... you see the worm drives in there. Yeah. So you just press it in and just all... Yeah, I'll show you how worms. to put it in because wow. you just can't force it in. Oh, okay. The reason this is, is going to be the masterful because of the worm and the gear in this red gear. Yes. You've got when you put it in, you just place it in there and you rock the wheels backwards and forwards so until the worm, it meshes. Until it meshes. Ah. And then just push and you'll feel it clip in. Right. Just like that. There is only one way to put these on, and it's just you can tell by the little indent in there and where the Oh, so the matching um lug. match. Okay. Just push it on, ready to go. Well, that's faster than F1 fuel stop. Well, I had no idea. I had no idea. Only... That's why we had Phil come in today. That's right. I, I would never have done that. No, he would have been I too scared. Have, I would have been crying in the corner. <laughs> Everybody's scared, and I say, keep pulling, keep pulling. And if you oh, do break you it, um, I fix it for you anyway. Right. But it's impossible to break it unless you are very ham-fisted. Don't tell so me that. So the only one that's different is the 48 class. 48. Which is a New South Wales locomotive. And because the fuel tank is too small to put a chip in it, the chip is located under here. So you have to take the body off and just put and, the and chip to in. take the body off this one, is it screws? No. Oh. There is not one screw in any of these locomotives. Oh, so you got another trick. You got yeah. another trick up your sleeve? Here we go. All right. Tricks All right, with Phil. Right. How to so as you see, comes Was out. that the same way? Same way. Same way. All right. And it's got three clips on it there's one there yes so if we can get a close-up of that let's get in here all right oh get closer right. forward, forward. Up to... there we go there we are so there's two clips there yep and there's one on top of the body that holds the two chassis halves together but to take the chassis out yes you just slip a screwdriver in that side lift yep and if it doesn't pop out you put it back in here lift and it'll just the whole chassis will pop out and that's okay. it. Okay. So, so it's a similar thing on the top, is it? Yeah. It's okay. A six pin plug just under here. All oh, right. And we've done it so it's easy to maintain for you guys out there in model land. How good is that? Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Is service and maintenance and having the, and that's why your, your trains run so well because they're so serviceable. Yeah. And they're a very simple design. And we've had this model. The 48 class running around since 2011, and we still have only had about three failures in all of that time. It's pretty good, isn't it? So, and we've got a very, very low failure rate as far as when it comes out of the box as well. I'm confident to send the model out to the customer and it will run. Well, you have to be, I suppose, yeah. don't you? And yeah. they're quite got a quite a bit of weight to them too. Mm. Like they're not just that's a die cast chassis, isn't it? Inside? Yes. yes, die cast. And what's this one here? That one's South Australia utilized the 48 class called the 830 class. Um, the reason the bogey is a little bit brighter than the paint on the side is that they're injection molded of course. in that colour. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very easy to weather. Just get a wash and put it on it, and it brings mm. it right back nicely to what it actually looks like in real life. Right. Well, anyone who's had one of your locos before know how smooth these run. They're renowned for working like a Swiss watch. And inside the one here that I opened, Phil, there's a load of, it's like a sticker sheet. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, the difference, again, the difference between the way I do things as a modeler is I might want to do a specific locomotive. Up in the factory, if I do 280 of these, they'll only do three numbers for me. Yep. Whereas you might have your favourite loco, DJ might have his favourite loco, and I've got mine. That gives me the three of them. But if there's more than us three in the club, we all can't have different numbers, and this gives the opportunity for people to choose the number they want. There's plenty of options there, aren't there? Yeah. So as an indicator, how many different numbers have you got on there? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah. One, this is for um, this particular locomotive, um, which is the New South Wales one. There's a um, – now, I've got to think. I'm testing you now, sorry. <laughs> you are testing me. 
there's 80 numbers, I think. 80? Well, there's a lot. I would have said uh, there's a lot. 85. 85 numbers there are that you can choose from. So. And what um, other goodies have we got here in the collection? What's this SSR thing? I like this. SSR is a private company that buys a whole lot of locomotives secondhand and they paint them up in all these wonderful colour schemes. And look at him. <laughs> Like a, like a chimp. <laughs> it's just interesting to what. Yeah. It's... So I'm going to break it, Phil. Okay. Save me the embarrassment. <laughs> you just go like that until it comes out that far. I'm just going to flick yeah. it on the floor and. Watch it, watch it bounce into a million bits. But that's okay. We haven't paid the invoice. I yet. have all the spare parts. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing that I specialize in. I've got the spare parts for all of my locomotives. So they can be repaired if you do drop them or whatever. So that's the SSR colour scheme. Stands for Southern Short Haul Railroad. It's stunning, isn't it? Um, Looks fast. Looks like yeah. my kind of logo. Yep. Richmond colours. Oh, yeah, you put me off now. <laughs> I better not say something then. Oh. What have we got um, there? This is Pacific National. Now, a lot of these 48s actually came down and 830 classes. 8.30 being the South Australian green, pardon me, the green one there, mm -hmm. and Pacific National. Oh, look at this. Um, they actually came down here um, into Victoria and went into South Australia. So all of these actually you can have running around on your layout. Right. Um, yeah, this was... I like all the rails on it. Yeah. What was important was to make sure they are accurate. So this is the... Pacific, um, sorry, the mustard pot, what we call the mustard pot, which is South Australian Railways. Okay. Mustard pot? Yep. Pop that one over here. What, what does that mean? Mustard pot is just the colour scheme. Oh, okay, okay. Um, being mustard and pot. So we've got the nickname mustard pot. And this other one that you bring over here is a GM. So there was three different marks of this. I've done the middle mark, which was the greatest number of them. Um, and just to put that there. And then because they had two different um, lettering on the side, I put a decal in for that too. So you could have this as Commonwealth Railways or Australian National Railways. What do you call these little um, couplers, which look like miniature KDs? Are they KDs? They're microtrains. Microtrains, okay. So microtrains is an American manufacturer of couplers. Right. And we put them in all of our models. Um, originally, I had what was called the Rapido, which was the ugly big thing. Right, yes. Which was still put in the box for the 48, which if I may show you here. Oh, so it's still there, there, right? And they've got a um, NEM coupler on it so you just take that out you press the little clip into the bogey right which if you ever need any instruction on it, it's all in underneath okay and um you can backdate it to repeat couplers okay but the couplers that are on it are really nice they are i hope you know which stickers go with which trains because i've got stickers you've opened and everything haven't you well so this this next one that's the New South Wales 125th anniversary scheme. Oh, wow. And then we've got the New South Wales, I'll just push this up a little yes. bit, bicentennial scheme. Oh, I like that one. So the 200 in 1988, that was a, there was several locos painted in that colour, and that was the only one in New South Wales that was painted, um, 48 class that was painted. Mm. So it actually has its number on it, the same with the um, 125th. There was only one in that colour scheme, so the number's actually on the loco. Okay. I was having such a good run, Phil. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? You're making a cocktail. The factory does that, so it, it, especially for you. I know. Confuse you. Well, he's, he, he's we're definitely confused. We're having a battle now. We're having a battle now. now. <laughs> Got a battle on our hands. This is another private railroad. It was called West Coast Rail, and they bought three... three oh, houses. look at that. We nearly had one. They nearly got away from you there, Phil. Three, I did, <laughs> but it didn't, did it? No, it didn't. You saved it. Um, three B classes. Um, well, like we that did too. B61. Um, that ran from here in Melbourne out to Warrnambool. Oh, so that's a Melbourne train. That's a Melbourne train that went out to Warrnambool, and that was where West Coast Rail operated. 
So there was two locos in that. Um, there was actually three locos that West Coast Rail had. One of them didn't have the white and the yellow on it like that. But, but you've gone there a little bit and you put the decals in there, the, haven't you? The research that I did didn't tell me that there was a number B76 in that colour scheme. Ah. So I made the decals so you can actually have two of them and put the decal over the decals that are on the side of that. Are they water slide decals? Yes, they're all water slide decals. So that just goes over this number right there? Yes, it goes over that number and then it's got the um, the other. And you get extra ones just in case you mess one up. Right, okay. You've thought of me at every step, haven't you? Oh, I tried to. <laughs> well, I've got my favourite. <laughs> I've got my favourite. I like the orange one. You like the orange one? Yep. So you've Which already one? sold one. That's but, right. Yeah, haven't I? Yeah. I like this one. I like the 200 one. Do you? Bicentennial. It's, no, it's New South Wales. Yeah. But, right. but, what about it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. That's my so. pick. 48 class. So Ixian model railways should have their new locomotive, which we've announced, which is the Victorian A2 and HO. Mm. Should be here according to the factory, and we know what their timelines are like. Um, should be here early next year, first quarter. Wow, that's exciting. That's not that far away. What are you doing? You're breaking it. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't say what they are, but they're secret projects that you might be able to get later on in the year from Gopher Models. Mm. That's um, exciting too. That's just to whet your appetite. Yes. Always new stuff coming. Yep. Look at this guy. Broken it now. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> He's got to buy it now. Well, yeah, that's right. You're taking that I just didn't believe it. that it was so easy oh, without man. breaking it because I would never handle a train like that. It's all die cast in there. Yes. Yep. How good is it? That's where the girth comes from. So remember, do the roly poly? Yeah. You yep. have to do the little. If you yeah, ever yeah, want to great. take the body off on the B classes, you do have to take the couplers out. Right. Um, in the same with these ones, that's the only extra you've got to do. Okay. Well, it's still very easy access, isn't it? Yep. And on on the GM, which is a single ended, what we call a bulldog, you have only got to take out the front coupler. Okay. The rear coupler is doesn't have to be taken off. Definitely clicks apart. together a lot easier than it comes apart. Right. No That's really clever. No warranties on that. I'm not had no idea. No, no that warranties is... on that one. That one's yours. <laughs> that That's... is fantastic. That's amazing, Phil. We've actually learned a lot, even though we've had these before. We didn't know all this, did we? We didn't know any of it. No. But we're really confident now. We can pull them apart like all day, every day. Really, nearly. That's right. Yep. Yep. And I've never had one of those clips that hold the baggies in fail, but mm. I do have spares if we ever need them. Right. Where did the gopher come from, Phil? The gopher came from when I started manufacturing kits. Have a look kits. at the box there. When I started manufacturing kits, um, I wanted to call it gopher models, and a mate of mine said, why don't you call it badger bits? And that Badger, <laughs> badger <laughs> bits, kits and bits. Right. Yeah. So that's why I called it badger bits. And my beach. wife, one of the few times she got angry at me. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so she's, when I went to do this mass produced, I had to call it something different. And she said, you're not starting it unless it's called Gopher Models. There you go. So I got outvoted one to one. Yes. Well, sometimes you need that sort of guidance, well, don't you? you do. Bet you just do what you're <laughs> told sometimes. Was, just do she, what you're told. She loved it because it was go for it. Go ah, for it. excellent. So, yeah. Very nice. Well, you definitely produce some exceptional models. I'm so and proud that you've got an ones. Australian manufacturer mm. in store with us showing his wares. That is fantastic. It's a pleasure. In... Uh, how long did you say you've been operating? 11 years, 12 years? Um, it'll be 13 years this year. Yep. Without disclosing the, the actual number, would it be like 100 locos you've sold, 50, 5,000, 28,000? Um, have to be thousands. I'd have to think. I've sold well in excess of 6,000. There you go. That is fantastic. 6,000 of the locos. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want to come and visit me, I'm at Diamond Creek Exhibition this year. That's down right. Here in Melbourne. There's a, the big show on. Are you sitting up Easter. a stall? I've or got a stall just... there. Oh. So and you'll have all these? I'll have all these here. Is that why we only got half of our water? <laughs> yes. That, that's right. <laughs> I get caught out every time. No, that's uh, okay. That's okay. Excellent. That's fantastic. We can always get more next week, can't we? You can. That's fantastic. Well, we'll Creek. need to. Diamond, Diamond Creek's Creek. not that far from here. Yeah. So if you're in Melbourne... 
That's easy yeah. to get to. Station yeah. Master Will's over there too. That's He'll right. be there. Just up past doing signatures and kissing front. babies. Yes. I just to have a bit of a redeeming feature about me from New South Wales. I used to I've lived down here twice. Have you now? And my son used to live down here too. Okay. So I'm half Melbourneian. That's that's some points, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's fantastic. I love it. I love yeah, it. Nice. Yeah. And we're obviously quite emotional about trains because we are actually part of a train station. Mm. Yes. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I reckon it's awesome. And it's how long you've been here? Seventy seven, isn't it? Mm, 77. I joined the Air Force in 74 mm -hmm. and did my training down here and you were here when I was doing my training. 47. We would have been here. You would have been we would have been here in 47 even. 74 I joined and you were here then. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, we so would the Hearns brothers have still been involved with the cadets back then, do you remember? Um I don't know. That big model would have been in the cadets room. Yes. Yes. Southern the big Cross. Southern Cross. The big Southern Cross. Yes, I remember that. Yep. Mm. That was here briefly. Yeah, it came here yeah. for about a year and now it's, it's off. Back it's at a... RAA or somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, in a base in central Victoria somewhere now. Mm. Mm. Right. Fantastic, right. Phil. Well, that would be awesome. Make sure before you leave today that you put all these in the box for us. <laughs> I will. Because I've got no idea what's going on. here while you're doing the rest Yeah, of that's yeah. fine. No worries. That's all right. Nice. We're going to clean up anyway because we've got to get all this out of the way. I'll move out out of the way and let you guys carry on with the yeah, rest of sure. our wares. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Phil. It's been an Thank absolute you. honor, and I hope to see you back again sometime. Next new release or something, or further down the track. Yeah, I'll be down here in June. Okay. Down here in June. I will pencil Sounds it good. in. Yep. All right. And if you just put them aside here, I'll put them all back. All right, no worries. We'll get the master get on the to master work. To do it. Here we go. There we go. All right, BG, go on with the comments in the car. All right, let's let's look at some comments, eh? Because I'm sure there's some people that have been guessing. We've started up here. What we got? What we got? We have a 307 Chevy. Is that right? Uh, what is it? 307 Chevy. No, that's wrong. Oh, that's wrong. All right, sorry, Retro Rob, you're wrong. 24 scale is incorrect, Craig. Oh, you have to guess, Phil. Phil's in the background trying to give it away. Just Scotty is very, very wrong. <laughs> Ford Falcon is incorrect, Anthony. That's like a Ford Falcon. Oh, what have I got here? Just Scotty's got a question for me. I just know how long does Tessa's enamel last? I have someone purchased 35 years ago that appears to be okay. What do you think? Taste it. Oh, you would lick anything, wouldn't you? I reckon just try a little bit and mix it up thoroughly. Try a little bit and see if it dries and if it dries hard. And if that's all good, then I go ahead I, and use it. We're still, got, we're still selling Humbrol from 47 and it's still tip top. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> no, I'm sure that even, even paints that have been well sealed for a long time, they should be fine as long as they haven't gassed off. Talk about, so just try that first. Talk about paints. How good is the, fi the fi finish? And fitting on those little locos. No, beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. That's why I didn't believe how easy he just whipped off the rolling gear underneath, mm -hmm. whatever it's called. I know I got that wrong. Mm -hmm. The famous will be upset with me. <laughs> the bogies. Sorry, Phil. Got the bogies off. So he can't be doing that. And it clicked on twice as easy. Yes. Makes yes. it really serviceable. Keep them running tip top. Yes. What do we got? Oh, well, that's about it for. Oh, look, Craig Jones got it right. 118 scale. Yes, it's 118 scale. Okay. So we know it's a 118 scale. We know it's a Holden. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it's a Monaro. Mm -hmm. We don't have a, de a model designation. No, no model designation here. We don't have the weight. We, we don't have a weight. Yes, yes. All right. What else have we got on? Oh, hang on. What? I just got he's still got another question about his, his ancient enamel. What? What would he thin the old testers enamel with to airbrush? I would suggest either the Tester's Airbrush Thinner, if you can still get it. Just Scotty being in the state should be able to find it. If not, then any enamel thinner, like Humbro enamel thinner or even Tamiya. Humbro enamel thinner really feels like terps. It's through it's everything. Oily. It's terrible. It's oily, isn't it? Uh, the other thing you can use with enamels is lacquer thinners actually works really well with enamels. Does it? Yeah. Probably good for airbrushing too because it's yeah, quite, quite sure. light, no? For sure. So my, my pick would be... Go the lacquer thinner. Try that. All right, what else we got here? Oh, again, from Just Scotty. Who is Mr. Hearns anyway? Why have we not met him? Mr. Hearns is everywhere. Yes. Yes, in spirit now. There were three Mr. Hearns. So three brothers. Three brothers. Yep. Return. Jack, Keith. 
and don't look at me. I'm the tip of my tongue. You've you've gone and committed now, haven't I? Jack, Keith, and Frank. No. <laughs> So Bruce and Bruce. Bruce, eh? And they returned from the war. They returned as from the Second servicemen. World war. That's right. So before R A F servicemen. They were R A F instructors. Or oh, well, Jack was an instructor. He remained instructing during the war, and then towards the end of the war, he was uh, he was sent to Papua New Guinea, flying boomerangs. Boomerangs. And then Keith, I think, was in bomber command, and then Bruce was flying P fifty ones. And also, he was in Japan after the war. Bruce is a man. I love a P-51. You love them, don't you? Do you and know then... that there was some made in Australia? Were they? They're called CA-13s. Is that oh, right? Oh, Phil knows. CA-13s. I only know right. that because they were at the F-1s. Oh, were they? Albert Park. Were they? There was one. Oh, what, Park? They were flying. Flying. Oh. I was like, that's my plane. I said, that's a P-51 that's out to my daughter, thinking I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. And the guy in the... Over speak. I said, Oh, if you, if you think that's a P51, you're mistaken. <laughs> that's they look Australia. very similar, don't they? Yeah, well, it's just a one that's made in Australia. They just changed yes. it. What does yes. the CA stand for? Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation. What there you go. We learn something new every day. Yeah. So after the war, they came back, opened up the shop, and well, it's become a landmark, hasn't it? Pass it on to Finley. That's it. Right. Alrighty. I'm going to tell you what I did last week. What did you do we're, last week? We already oh. touched. Do, do I have to prepare stuff that I'm, I wasn't prepared for? I'm going back in time. Oh, dear. Oh, hang on. Um, so, yes, I did go to the F1s. We had a Yokomo team out. Team day outing. Big Ooh. thank you to Beth and Kathleen for inviting us out today. But prior to that, Saturday morning, I, myself, Aaron Defina, and Paul Mansell of Alltech Racing, we went out to Knox. Mm -hmm. And we went out to a debut and get a bit of a photo shoot with the Yokomo Super Dogfighter, the 870C. Now, this is the one we saw on last, did I show it on last week's show? Yeah, last week's show, all pretty and painted. Mm. And it still very much is pretty and very much painted. Um, however, it has been tortured and abused on the racetrack. It was a bit dusty now, wasn't it? A little bit dusty. It's got a few scratches. But you can zoom in on there, and so yeah, because it's got a few few marks on the wing. Now this wing is going to come off probably until the vintage bash, I dare say. Um, but the body held up remarkably well. We didn't absolutely cane it, but we did spend probably half an hour to an hour on track circulating to make sure that Paul could in fact get some good photos of it and catalogue it for for not only for us and for Yokomo, but for Tony Gray as well. Mm. Um, so if you've got some of the photos there, Beads, let's, let's have a look of the Super Dogfighter in action. All right. Let's add this to the video. There we go. That is a, that is a wallpaper worth having. Isn't it? Isn't it? That is Isn't gorgeous. It? it looks like a magazine shoot. Paul did amazing stuff for us. Paul right. Mansell. What have we got over here? That's in action. Have a look at it. It's majestic. I know that's what Neil likes to call the track. That's a really good action shot. You can see the wheels are in motion. Mm. So the tyres are, are full. full and speed. how good does the comical body look? Yeah, oh, it yeah, looks, yeah. looks really good. I, I can't speak highly enough of it. Look at that. That's an action shot. It's roosting. The 21.5 uh, Orca doing the business for sure. Mm. Oh, a jump. Yeah, a bit of a jump or a bit of a landing. What's this thing here? That's a lossy mini that you're getting around. Oh, that's why it was so small. Pulse. Yeah. Uh, oh, that. just posing. That's right. It's just a poser. Isn't it? Reminds me. We should change its name to BJ. Oh, look at that. That was before we actually turned a wheel. Because mm, the, we'll the pink it, is like really bright and everything. We were put up there before we got the tyres dirty. Look at that. Looks really nice. Oh, there's another action shot. How good is it? Looks really and good. All this, you can see all the, the artwork, which was actually, it's all painted on. Yeah. All this. There's no and stickers at all. This is just reminiscent of looking at, I suppose, magazines of such cars when, when right. I was a kid. There's another one. And you can see that it's a little bit, so that would have been like the first couple laps from the track was a little bit wetter, mm -hmm. a bit, obviously a bit damper, the way that the mud is sort of stuck to the tyres a little bit. Look how the front wheels off the ground. Yeah. The 21.5, although not a fire breather, mm -hmm. is definite, was definitely enough. Is that all you put up? That's it. That's it. 
So there was a ton more photos. Uh, I did put them up on the Hearns Racing, um, the Hearns Racing Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Made a bit of a reel and stuff. I was just going to whip this off and show you, in case you haven't seen it yet, exactly how we run. And have a look at the dirt and dust in their beige. We've got the Orca Totem. And you can see I haven't cleaned it because... It's clean now. It's clean now, that's right. But even with the under tray, I was quite surprised. But I suppose that's what running on dust is like, right? Like, Well, they're always like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it stops not, all the big chunky stuff from coming in. Yeah. There was no – at one point there was no um, – I thought there might have been something in one of the belts, but it seemed to be just a little bit tight, I think, running in. And after about five laps, it was, like, super silent. I think the, the belts actually definitely run in now, isn't it? Yeah. Because it was very tight to begin with. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's running really nice and it's running really smooth. Mm. The diffs are dry because it's an oil-filled diff, so I was worried about there being a leak and attracting dirt and going on the belt. Yep. But everything is is tip top. It's out of the box as per, you know, Mr. Yokobori would have loved to see it. Mm. It's a nice little touch we've got on the uh, a special battery strap. Yep, that was made by uh, Brenton at Unfair RC. We've got the Blitzream 2 21.5. Mm -hmm. That's got a new owner, that motor. Is it now? Yep. Yep. That has been, that's going in Jeffy Biggity Biggs. Biggity Big. Biggity Bigs BBX. Mm. Biggity Bigs BBX. And this is going to get a 17.5 now. Right. So the slipper clutch is working really nice. I had that a touch on the loose side right. just because I was quite cautious about, I don't know, breaking it. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly tightened it as the, the conditions and that, that running and everything. Well, well the, the rear belt's loosened up too, which is good. Yeah, because there's no adjustment for the rear belt, is there? No. So the original ones had no adjustment here. No. And later on, am I correct that they had a turnbuckle or something on here where you mm. actually like bent the chassis to? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's... So there was a turnbuckle that was that was uh, attached from here to here. Yeah, and you were just the top plate. Just bend the chassis mm. to uh, suit. Yeah, <laughs> and the the top plate was slotted here, so the rear would have a bit of movement. Oh, I, I had movement. Did you? Yeah, Dafina had movement. Oh, he loved really? It. He had a good drive. Um, but, yeah, but a huge thank you to Paul Mansell for coming out, getting some awesome photos. Yeah, great shots. Aaron Defina for joining me. And, yeah, yeah the Super Dog Fighter. We're looking for whole swag of parts coming next week. Yes, that's exciting too. Which is good. Not that I need any. I didn't even that, break it. Well, you can push it even harder now, and if you break it, you Got don't it. have to worry. That's right. Look at even the tyres. I love these period tyres. Yeah. And they just sound unique. It just sounded bizarre because yeah. it was just like – Well, you've got chunky, chunky pins on it. Yeah, it sounds like a – like. And because they've got no insets, and it's almost like a hollow sound. Oh, okay. Uh, and with no kick up and a flat chassis, it was just sort of smacking off everything. Smack. Yeah, just like it was in the old days. But that's cool. So we're going to put a heavy duty wing on it. Put yes. we'll retire this one until the bash. Yes. And we'll get it back out to Knox. We'll go do a clubby. Mm. Fantastic. That like is it. that is a dog fighter, isn't it? All right, let's get some more. Uh, I'm going to baby this body a bit. This is. Good here. What have we got? Poor Phil's over there. Oh, still we've got, we've got some weights. We're going to have to measure it. going to have to weigh it. Dun, 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 dun. What do you reckon, Beach? What's that? The weight. The weight. What do I reckon? I reckon it's lighter than 10 kilos. I reckon 833. What? I'm just putting a bit out there. Oh, okay. All right, bring the, bring the measuring device. And only you and I will know for the moment. You're going to need a little box, aren't you? Yeah. Let's plug her. All right, let's have a look. Yeah? Yeah? You happy with it? Hang on, I've got to do a bit of self-calibration here. Yep. Second? Yeah, right. it's the same. I'm pretty yeah, happy yeah. with that. I'm happy with that. Happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so that means that Jeff's 1,000 grams is too light. Too light. Too light. So that blew my guess straight out of the water, didn't it? Yes. 833. Yes. Oh, look, Anthony, Anthony says HK Monaro. HK Monaro. Is he correct? He's correct. He is correct. It is an HK Monaro. HK Monaro by Holden. What color is it? I'm going to lift that up. 
See if that... special. I'll see if anyone can see the engine. Yep. Oh, look at this. Anthony's come back oh. again. HK Monaro GTS. GTS. Could be. Mm. What else at the badge says? Mm. GTS. Just got his guest 666, which is too light. Too light. 896 is too light, Anthony. Um, now, just gone the other way and gone 3,000, which is way too heavy. So it's between 1,000 and 3,000 3, grams. But it's good. We've got goalposts. Yes. We do have goalposts. Anthony says it's yellow mustard. Not sure. I don't. Is it? Nope. Definitely not yellow no, mustard. No, it's not. No, no. Sorry, Anthony. That's not <laughs> that's correct. I've got a funny name, actually. Because I think of red when I think Anthony, of that. Anthony, 922, too light. It's got to be above one kilo. Oh, there he goes. He's, he's fixed that. 1250. No, nah, 1250 is too heavy. So 1250 and one kilo. Yeah. Right. What else you got? Beads, what's in your pile? I've got a pile of stuff. Oh, I think that's a bit. This is sort of related to what we talked about before, uh, but not. You can't have trains the whole show. The Kato Uni Tram sets are back. Uni Tram. We love our trams in Melbourne. Did we not have this one set up at one point? No, on we, opened, we opened the box and we put it together. You did it with Marlon. That's right. We did. Mm. We did. It's a double a double ringer. Mm. Is that what you call it? So it comes with all this. It's got the hard plastic bases, which slot together. So it gives you this circular layout. And it's got all the uh, – it's embedded. The track is embedded into that so it looks like it's on the road. And then it's got the internal parts, which you can place buildings if you want. But it comes with a controller. Does the trams have light inside? Is it? They could be. I'm they could sure. be lit. Fully lit. But they sort of look like a Melbourne tram too, don't they? Oh. A little bit. They're very tram-like. Mm. But this is very much a Japanese-style tram, so... How do you know that? Because it's smiling. Well, all, all their characters, all their things sort of small and have a bit of animation included. And, I'm know. animated. It's cute, isn't it? Fair. So these are back. Uni trams. Uni tram. Did we get Kato in today? We did. Oh, Kato arrived. So I love it. Full restock of track and some other sets as well. Absolutely. Like Yamanote set. Where else? I don't know. Sure. Should I show you this? Yeah, show me something. We've got a whole bunch of Gundam. Oh, it was a Gundam gangbang. Excuse me? What have you got there? This is a new, I'm pretty sure it's a new real grade. I don't remember seeing it ever before. Force Impulse Gundam Spec 2. I don't know that I can I don't know that I can approve any of that credit that you just said. What do you mean? It must be new because I've not seen it before. Well, I haven't seen it before. I'm pretty sure it's new. That's a reprint. We had a it's lot a of It's a reprint new stuff. from 1984. If you it don't is know, if you don't not, know your Gundam, it is I've done not. my research. Are you sure? Nope. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's brand new. It's a real high Ooh. number. Unfortunately, Force. neither of us are very Force impulse. Very um, educated with we our Gundam. Have had Ninja we do love. We should get Ninja Will back in one day. Yeah, if we can get him in. So real grade. What's real grade? How's that fit into it? That's the uh, the more entry level one. Not quite. Ah, I nearly so, got it. It's the same scale as HG, which is high grade. High grade. But it's got all the complexity of the MG. So it's between an HG and an MG. So mainly designed for people that don't have a lot of space. Like a lot of Japanese didn't have a lot of space, but they love building MGs, the master grades. So hence, real grade was developed. So it is a little bit more fiddly because everything is much smaller. He looks serious, doesn't he? He looks serious. It's not Barbatos, is it? It's not Barbatos. So this is from Gundam Seed Freedom. What is it? It's Freedom? Why, yes. are you, why are you looking at me? You want me to confirm that? I'm waiting for you I to can't, I can't imp impart that. knowledge. There you go. I love learning stuff. Yeah, I do too. Show me what else you've got in your bag of wares. Look how cool this is. High new Gundam. I don't know how they get new out of V. Well, that's the uh, high new. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the um the Greek symbol for new, isn't it? I don't speak Greek. N U, new. Hmm. No. Not sure. All right. Well, it's a high V new. <laughs> high V. This is a ver car. So ver car is a uh, interpretation of the original artwork. So it's slightly different to other um. 
high new Gundams. Does it come with a person? Yeah, they generally come with a little figure. This, this, Look how thick the box is. It's a big, thick box. Does it show a little person? Maybe here I show the face. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, okay. Maybe it doesn't come with it. So some of these do come with a pilot. It does, right there. Oh, geez, it's small. I thought it well, was one to one hundred scale. I thought it would be bigger than that. There's your pilot right there. This is made from eco plastic. Oh, is this eco plastic? Is it? Yep. There's a pilot. There is. So that means it's is it recycled? Probably. Or is it just recyclable? It's probably recycled. You know, notice how all the kits are. Each sprue is a particular color, so I could probably just collect all the the light color ones and then reproduce them, recycle them. Got some nice clear components here. You know, they're, they're signature multicolored sprue. Signature. Got a whole heap of gray parts for the inner frame. And you got some colorful bits for the bodywork too. And it comes with a stand. Comes with a stand. This is big. Do they always come with stands, Beach? They don't always. But this one's probably designed to have a, a really dynamic pose. But if it comes with a stand, I'll show you on the side of the box. There it is. There it is. There's a stand. It's flying. Lots of kit here. That'll keep you busy over and Easter. This is just a little bit of the stuff that we've received from Bandai. Well, you couldn't bring that in. This is brand spanking new. Look at this thing. What is it? There's not many things bigger than your head, but that's one of them. It is. Meteor unit. What's it come with? 16. It's huge. So it's a Gundam with a vehicle that flies in. Yeah, that. It's got all the laser blasty bits too. So robots. Look at it. So that's the figure. Oh, wow. There. Does it come with a figure? Yeah. Full open mode. Where's the Freedom Gundam? What size is the Gundam? Must be tiny. Well, it's HG, so it's 1 to 144, so it's still going to be this big. Holy moly, that's like two meters big. Well, let's have a look. That's ridiculous. Oh, it's sealed. Or, or... Oh, it's been taped up. So you couldn't get in there. They know that no, you were going to get not, in there and fit around. get in there, right? This would be easier for people to see. That's massive. Look at it. Oh. There's a little dude sitting there. Look at the sheer vastness of it. And that's the whole whole thing. Absolutely huge. What's the imagination there, isn't it? Gonna need a big desk. Big desk. No? Yeah. There we go. So that's in, as well as a lot of um, PGs. We've got a lot of um, perfect grades that have come back in the stock. I haven't seen that many perfect grades for a long time. No, that's right. So we've got that, um, what do they call that special one again? The Unleashed, that's back. We've got uh, PG Unicorns. And there's one in the big blue box, a plain box. I've not seen that one before. I think that's a classic grandpa style grandpa? RX-78. Is it? Mm. And a lot of MGs, the mm. new RGs, which you just showed you. And of... the Gundam people know, they come marching in the door, they go mm -hmm. straight, they mm -hmm. grab like a fifth they pool, right? They go right four, right, I'm done. Let me, right. let me go to work. That's right. Oh, That's right. That was yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm done. What do you got? I got some goodies. Have you? How's the car going? Let's see. We have got well, there's more guesses on the weight. On the weight. What about the engine size? 16 is too heavy. Uh, 1111 is too heavy. 1320 is too heavy. 1400 is too heavy. 2300 is way too heavy. And the motor it came with is a 187 straight six or a Chevy 307. Oh, we're going to have to pick one of them. No. Oh, none of them are right? None of them are none right. None of them are right. Okay. Oh, that's it. No, right, no more guesses. All right. All right. What do you got? What do you got in your, your bag? It's in my bag of goodies. Well, it's going to surprise us all, isn't it? Is it? It's going to surprise me. Oh. We got, Hang on. I've got some bits and bobs. I've realized how I keep wrecking all my zips as well. You do. Mm. Why are you just being? Well, it's when you don't open the bag properly and you just fold it back on itself. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, we got some more of these. Got some more of these. We sold out like last week. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we had more there. Transponders, right? RC fours. No, you need transponders to go racing. You do. What are these things you got? Look at this. Oh, 
JPRC charge cables. And these are just the classic 2S style. Yes. Got four mil banana plugs on one end yep. and a stepped four to five on the other. Yeah, we'll with, the that, will you? with the single point. Mm. And we've got them in different colors now as well, yes. which is really cool. So if you've got a two channel, three or four channel charger, yes. you can identify which which is which really quickly. Yes. When you yeah. have all blacked out leads, you turn the wrong thing off and so that's that's something that I really like. Now what have I got here? I'm gonna get these out. These Are nice we? little shiny boxes of goodness. Right here. And when you know, you know. Okay, so we've Do got some know? motors. Here's the this is the um, the total speed controller which we saw before in the super. I'm gonna motor. I'm gonna break this one open. Oh yeah? Yeah, this is the Phoenix. Oh is it? Yeah. So this is, has had a fresh restock as well today. But we can't get enough of these, can we? No. And for very good reason. Sorry, Aaron, I just broke the box. Somebody changed my blade and now I can't use it. Yeah, you blame me. I nearly lost a finger. Did you see it? Well, when you lose it, you don't feel it. Well, not when you it's see gone. blood gushing now, that's all. Oh. What are you doing there? It's so sharp, I cannot even get a purchase on the box. Use your finger now. Uh, it's scary when I see you with, with a knife. Well, I'm not a loud one. Don't show my parole officer. All sorted? Oh, look at that. Well, we got there. All right. So so no injuries were... Had yet. No. All right, so there the we go. Today's still young. Here's a totem. Have a look at the beautiful packaging. That's not going to be a complete unboxing. But this is what Very you get compact. when you buy Orca Totem. Really good foam that you can cut up. Master Joe loves this stuff. So, so Nick was uh, mentioning stuff. that he'll surprise there's no fan on the speed controller. Now, we don't use a fan because we don't need to, but it does have a fan mount there. Yeah. Like With a 21.5 or 17.5, especially in off-road, you're not really going to mm. need one. The speed controller does not get hot at all. It's a 100-amp speed controller. Mm. But if you do want to use one, mm. in the bat, in the box, there's, there's one here. Oh, I didn't know it included it. Yeah. I thought it was optional. No. Oh, okay, so you do get a fan. It's optional whether you use it because mm. we've got two screw points here, right. so you can put your fan on top there. Okay, and it plugs right in to the speed controller. How far can you push these speed controls? Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> we might have to take it to the velodrome and find out. Oh, really? Well, it's 100 amp, so yep. I think it's rated to 10 and a half okay. or eight and a half turn. Yes. But, Which is pretty decent for a small speedy like this. Well, we only run stock in Australia down to. 13.5 mm. over 10.5 turns right so and i'm tipping if you run a fan like it, the mode the speed controller doesn't know what mode you got on it so mm -hmm. it really depends on your settings and the environment and how hard you're pushing it right so yeah definitely but yeah temperature had the current handling capabilities is definitely what's going to limit it mm. but um look at the size of it it's tiny and you saw how small it was on the chassis yes comes with some beautiful uh very flexible silicon core wire 13 mm. gauge Racer's choice, really, really nice. Mm, nice. Uh, pure copper wire. Mm. Very good. I like it. So that is a Orca Totem stock spec. Jump on them. Now, what else have what you got over things? there in your stash? Well, I've got these other shiny boxes. Others. Oh, and these are heavier than the speed controller. Yeah. What about these things? These are the all new Blitrim 3s. So we've got Blitrim 3s here and we've got Modtrim 2s here. Yeah, so the all new motors. So Modtrim is what they call their modified motors mm -hmm. and Blitrim is what they call their stock motors. And these stock motors are all raw and IFRA and everything approved. Which one's this one? I'm not sure you have to read the box. So I just wanted to get them out. We might have had them on the show a little while back. Oh, wow. But we only had very, very limited stock. And in the past 24 hours, it looks like we're going to have very, very limited stock of what's left here. So what I'm whizzling about in my fingers is a 17.5. You're right there, mate. I'm, I'm, this is well packed, just like. Well packed, just like you. Here you go. No, I'm not well packed. Here we go. That's like Phil's trains. Those are well protected. Oh, probably not as good as Phil's trains. All right, so what do you got? You got a 17 and a half. 17 and this is a 21 and a half, as you can see from. The stator there, it's been printed. And how nice and neat does that look? Look at the size of the big collector in here. They're very lightweight. There's a lot of cutouts on these. Isn't it? Trim. 
And so the 17.5, the notice on the 21 that I opened earlier with Goody mm. is that, see, it's got epoxy on it. Epoxy where? Oh, Over there. the winding, yeah. Yes, yes. And I've noticed that some of the other ones don't have that quite as much. So it looks like the less the wines, a little bit less epoxy. Maybe there's some sort of weight rule that they had to follow ah. to get them up to up to weight. Well, they've, they've taken out a lot of material, haven't they? But they've taken out a massive amount of material out of the can. Yeah. And what I like about it is it doesn't have any through screws. So usually motors all have a screw that goes from the front. Mm to the back yes and that's what they use to hold together which is all well and good and that's fine because they're not going to like fall apart well, this is but, bolted together here right yeah but as the motor fields are, are operating in each phase mm -hmm. opening and collapsing yeah that steel screw yes. gets in the way right and disturbs the disturbs the field sometimes even on a fan if you've got your six volt 30 mil fan too close to the motor mm -hmm. and you rev it mm -hmm. the fan will stall because right. of the magnetic Disturbance. Oh, okay. The disturbance in the force. The force. The force. Disturbance in the force. Right. So these are a couple of the stockies. These are They're awesome. Beautiful. So 17.5, really good for tool drive buggy. Yep. So heaps of these. And 21.5, also good for tool drive buggy and entry level TC racing. Mm. Now, what have I got here? I've got some of these mod ones. Because these are my personal favorites. You like modified? Uh, I do. I do. Not, 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 not that I can operate them correctly, mm -hmm. but that's half the battle. But these ones here, these are full turn motors. So most people are used to hearing the expression eight and a half or 17 and a half or 21.5 turn. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a way that they're manufactured. And that turn relates to copper wire wound around the stator in this scenario. It used right. to be the armature. But on a full wind motor, you don't have the, remember I showed you the big collector ring down the front here? Mm. You don't have that. So right. a big advantage of having a full turn motor is a lot of cooling and airflow around the front of the windings to keep it cool. Right. You know, that, that collector ring has been put at the back of the motor now, where yes. it's pretty much enclosed anyway. But yeah, leaves the front of the can really open. So you've got a a four turn there mm -hmm. so it's wrapped around four times yes and I, i'd say looking at the looking at the wires i'd have to like take it apart and have a look at it but it looks like a double wind yeah it'd be multiples wouldn't it yeah it'd be multiples i don't think it'd be a triple it's too heavy gauge but it'd be a double the three and a half are triples and this one here the the five turn is also looks like a double wind because when it's a single wind it's like fencing wire mm. it's like bloody thick solder wound around mm. it so but yeah, that's no, really cool. I'm really looking forward to them. Um, all new rotors in the stock motors. I notice I can tell by that the writing on the end here. So this is a modified rotor, 12.1 in diameter, mm -hmm. which is what comes on, I think, anything under five and a half turns. Right. Um, so they use that smaller rotor to um, give it a better, well, give it a smoother power curve and higher RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think 5.5 to 8.5 uses 12.3 diameter rotor in a modified format and then anything over 8.5 is usually 12.5 diameter rotor so that changes maximum. the air gap changes the air gap and the, the torque curve of the motor mm. so yeah but that is really cool so there's a couple of new motors so we've got heaps of wines in everything from three and a half up to 21 mm. everything in between something that i saw there that i haven't seen for a while on the shelves is a 10.5 turn oh yes and that would be a real sensible person's two-wheel drive buggy motor at Knox. Right. And that's not you. Not for me. No, no, no. But you're not sensible. But a fast person who, you know, a mm -hmm. responsible person, that mm -hmm. is a perfect buggy motor, uh, two-wheel drive buggy motor. But yeah, so all these motors are in and the latest goodies from Orca. Mm. That's all I've got to say about that. Let's go back to this car and see what people have guessed. What have they guessed? We know it's a Holden. We know it's a Monaro. We know it's HK. Do we have Anthony a... says a 327 cubic inch. 327 cubic inch Molder. That mm. is correct. That's so, correct. Uh, SB, okay. SBC. Anthony got that. Do you know what SBC is, Beach? SBC, Shepard and SBC. SBC. Oh, SBC. No. What's an SBC? Small block Chevy. Oh, is it now? Yeah. Small slot block Chevy V8 motor. Right. American motor. 
in these 307s and 327s yeah both chevys i didn't know that yeah the australian v8s didn't come to a little bit later in a 4.2 liter mm-hmm. and five liter variants or 4.9 liter yeah All right but the chevys yeah 307s 327s 350s got a guess of 1069 that's too heavy too heavy did we get a color uh, well the colors are wrong colors are wrong yeah. what do you mean we've got some yellows but they're the wrong well it's yellows. sort of i'd call it yellow yeah but it's a particular yellow isn't oh it? it is a particular yeah, yellow. yeah yeah it's a nice yellow here. i had somebody uh i knew somebody once who painted a car that color mm-hmm. and he, i said what color is it he's going oh i just call it that yellow that yellow he's going oh yeah, that yeah. yellow i said really he said yeah because when you'll see it you go oh that yellow and right. he was right you see it and you go oh that yellow Oh, look at this. Anthony's got a winner here. Yep. What? Warwick Yellow. Oh, stop it. He's got it. That's funny because when I hear Warwick, I just hear red. Yes. Or orange. <laughs> Don't you know? Okay. Now, 1050. 1050. 1050. No, too <laughs> much. Too heavy. Have a closer look, Beach. You can handle this one. What do you want me to handle it? I'm in. What's let's that? Go. We, we done? Let's, well, have, we a close, be, let's have a Let's have a Let's have it. Let's have Yeah, well, they can guess with, while like, we have a closer look. 1025. No. That's too light. What are we doing? We're getting in. We're getting in tight, are we? How tight are you going? That's pretty tight. Is it too tight? I thought like a toy we'll we need to al- We need to alleviate this problem next week. <laughs> Shouldn't, yeah. So, so yeah. Once it gets put on the back burner. Look at that. So there's your small block Chevy, eh? Yeah. Small block Chevy. Oh. 327. Yes. It even says it on the, on the cat. What do they call that color on the block? What do they call it? Yeah. Is that a particular color for the... Chevy yeah, red, yeah. Chevy red. I don't it's know. It's a Chevy red. It's Chevy red. Which it's very is, orange. Which is very orange. Exactly. Mm. Chevy red, but it's orange. Right. That's an official paint color. Mm. That probably does have a better code, but if you say to the paint guy, I need Chevy red, they know what it is. Right. Is it Chevy red, Phil? Yeah. See, Phil knows his GM. <laughs> I can see he's over there. Oh, look at the detail underneath. What have we got here? 655, 655. What? Probably out of 1,200? 1,000? I don't know. It could be 1,000. We'll have to check the on... certificate for that. Oh, there? Yeah, yeah, I won't say there. Look at the That's green tail good. shaft. I don't know why that is. Green? Easy to see the leaks? Well, you wouldn't want to, really, but... Oh, I just I mean, the leaks. That's why you'll see a lot of um, automatic transmission repairers paint their transmissions red. Mm. The aircraft control systems have a lot of red, too, don't they? Is that for seeing oil, too? No, the didn't have a lot of red. Oh, didn't it? Oh, okay. Red means go. Does red mean go for you? Does red means go. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So what have we got? Oh, we've got ten thirty nine. That's close enough. Who said that? Enough. Who Is said it? it? That was just Scotty from the US. Just Scotty, you're the winner. He doesn't have even seen one of these Australian cars. Yeah. He, well, he guessed something totally different before. Well, he's an American. We we'll have to give him that. Yeah. There we I go. don't know how he copes over there with all those other Americans. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves a medal or something, you right? Can't push too hard because that's not going to happen. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna break a nail. <laughs> so we're gonna opening bonnet. We're gonna opening doors. No, fruit. no. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what I'm I can say. see that now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's classic collectibles. That is. HK Monaro GTS three twenty seven in Warwick Yellow. That's right. And ten thirty nine was a guess. So congratulations. The actual weight was ten forty one. Mm. But we got there. We got there and we dawdled our way through episode two hundred and one. And we had a rock star of Australian model railway in with us. That's right. Phil, Phil from Gopher. A big thank you to Phil coming in, teaching us. Mm. Showing, what are you Learned doing? A lot. I'm cleaning scratch it. it. I'm cleaning it. Don't worry. Get your little mitts off there. I know how to handle these things. Well, I don't know that you do. I do. I'm Brett from Hearns. And I'm BJ. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.